welcome welcome back to our future scientist meet chapter number 21 so today we got three new presenters and uh, one from uh, nisha vidya school the other two from chennai public school one person from chennai public school the other from idas kada school velo and we got one uh, uh, series presenter the planets of solar system and beyond that uh, naman okay so to introduce to new people who are watching this what is vayu shastra vayu shastra is an edutech startup incubator under iit madras and rtbi rtbl to spread the awareness of aeronautics and aerospace among school children and college students using hands on methods and theatrical enactment so we use storytelling method to teach aeronautics and aerospace and it's totally hands on and during pandemic we came up with this uh, new uh, thing called trigger the spark where we did research about type of elan mas abutan right brothers we created a curriculum with a lot of stories a lot of science and basic simple hands on models and it has nine modules once the students complete all the eight to nine modules uh, they will be added to young researchers group in vayu shastra once they get a basic practice of presentation and all these things they will be uh, given a lot of starts slots to present online to expose their skill sets yes so like that we have more than 100 students now and there are teams there are ceos ctos there are children who written books so a lot of good things happen who are watching this for the first time please do support uh, do support us to take this uh, initiative to a lot more places till date we reached to more than eight countries more than uh, 20000 students thank you so much okay let's begin today our first presenter is uh, he is known to you who are watching this regularly they will definitely know naman and his series of uh, presentations and that's naman yes the topic is planets of solar system and beyond this is part 9 and soon i'll be posting this as a single series with all his uh, part 1 part 2 everything i'm going to put it as a single video and uh, he is from ekia school btm grade 5 okay naman so the stage is all yes so thank you jagu for introducing me first of all and it's an honor to present this because i have done a couple of changes and it's one of the major ones to this ppt and it'll come at the end so let's begin plans of the solar system and beyond part 9 Well, I'm in a shared space now, which is me. So let's go to a small note. Whoever's watching often, they will know this note that I always give. Whoever's new, this is a series where I talk about plans of the solar system and further, further to the exoplanet, which I've reached. Um, this will go on until I run out of plans to discuss on. Thank you and enjoy. I might do other presentations in between. So let's begin. Uh, the rules will I present. I'm just gonna skip this. So yeah, Proxima Centauri C. I am pretty sure we have heard of Proxima Centauri B in my first exoplanet presentation of this series. So, what kind of an exoplanet is Proxima Centauri B? Proxima Centauri, I mean. Proxima Centauri C, also called Proxima C or Alpha Centauri C, C is a very strong exoplanet candidate, orbiting the red dwarf star Proxima Centauri, which is the closest star to the Sun and a part of a triple star system. It is located approximately 4.2 light years away, or 1.3 parsec, or let's say. 4 into 10 to the 13th power kilometers from us in the constellation of Centaurus, making it and Proxima B the closest known exoplanets to the solar system. 
Proxima Centauri C is a super Earth or mini Neptune, about seven times as massive as Earth, orbiting a roughly 1.49 astronomical unit or 223 million kilometers every 1928 days or 5.28 years. Due to its large distance from Proxima Centauri, the exoplanet is unlikely to be habitable because it's far away from the habitable zone. With a low equilibrium temperature of about 39 Kelvin or negative 34 degrees Celsius. The planet was first reported by Italian astrophysicist Mario Damaso and his colleagues in April 2019. Damaso's team had noticed minor movements of Proxima Centauri in the radial velocity data from ESO's HAPS instrument, indicating that a possible second planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. Discovery was published in January 2020. In June 2020, the planet's existence was confirmed in Hubble astrometry data from 1995, allowing its inclination and true mass to be determined. Also in June 2020, a possibly directly imaged counterpart of Proxima C was detected, the infrared with spear. But the authors admit that they did not obtain a clear detection. So it is normally considered inadequate. If their candidate source is in fact Proxima Centauri C, it is too bright for a planet of its mass and age, implying that the planet may have a ring system with a radius of around 5 Jupiter radius. Let's say. So, um, so can Proxima Centauri C be colonized? That is a big question that I all, always have. While we continue to labor over the question of planets around Alpha Centauri A and B and Proxima Centauri, which is the triple star system, which I said in the previous slide, the tiny red dwarf, which is Proxima Centauri, Usually interesting planet in the habitable zone remains a robust source of work. And what do I mean by that interesting planet? Proxima Centauri B. But it's surely going to be an early target for whatever interstellar probes we eventually send. And it's the presumptive first destination of breakthrough starshot. Now we have a news of a possible second planet here. Though well outside the habitable zone, nonetheless, Proxima Centauri C, if it is there, commands attention. Which it is there. It is. It was confirmed. So, a final consideration is that while the flux contrast between the hypothetical Proxima C and the parent star, depending on albedo, among other things, is beyond the capabilities of our current direct imaging technologies. Thus, it was not actually used to discover, but it's the direct imaging technology is inadequate, as I said. The apparent separation of planet and star should be accessible to future high contrast imaging instruments. Perhaps the European Extremely Large Telescope, which the paper mentioned, along with other ground and space based instruments. So we have what the authors described as a very challenging target, along with huge interest for astronomers characterizes those as the false. So, Proxima C can be colonized, and we can say we have a lot to catch up on, but it still isn't assured. You can say that because it is not guaranteed, because it has a very cold temperature, but it has the capability colonized. So, I'm going to play some couple of videos and help you understand Proxima C. Much better. So, uh. have a lot of fun. Oh, sorry, Coach. Plates. From what this new world could mean to whether it's one will colonize, join me as we explore the potential super-Earth found orbiting Proxima Centauri, our neighboring star.
Let's start at the beginning of all this, shall we? When it comes to exploring space, there are many goals that astronomers and astrologers try to accomplish. One of the basic ones is just to learn more about the universe as a whole, trying to fill in the pieces of the puzzle that is the cosmos, and especially in the most recent of years, we've been doing a good job of finding things big and small across the stars, including finding some new things in our very own solar system. But the other main goal that has taken up a lot of our time is the search for planets that could not just house life, but also be a potential colony point for humanity should the need and technology arise. We've looked across the stars and have found many planets that could be what we are looking for. But in terms of immediate evacuation, the best contender that we have is in the Alpha Centauri system. We've talked about this star and its planets before, but to give you the gist of it, there is a star within the system we call Proxima Centauri. It's a red dwarf star that is smaller than our sun, and it also emits less heat than the sun we have. As we started to observe this system, we found a planet we call Proxima Centauri b. This planet was within the habitable zone of the star, and given what we know about it so far, it could just be the planet that we go to in order to live amongst the stars in more than one place. In fact, many sci-fi stories have used the Alpha Centauri system as a place where a colony has been formed, including the recent Netflix reboot of Lost in Space. Anyway, a lot of research has gone into not just studying Proxima Centauri b, but also trying to find ways to get there in a quicker amount of time. You see, Proxima Centauri is 4.2 light years away from Earth. That may not sound like a lot, but at our best speeds, it'd take tens of thousands of years depending on the craft we used and whether we'd be going at top speeds of the best craft that we have. Obviously not a good option. There are initiatives to try and get there faster, including Breakthrough Starshot, but whether it works or not is very much up in the air. However, while we are still trying to figure out how we get to Proxima Centauri b, we're still studying the planet and the system itself to see how much information can be found about it, including whether we can indeed live there. As this research was going on in 2019, a signal suddenly reached Earth that hinted at something we didn't know about before. There's a third planet near Proxima Centauri. We are pleased to show for you the first time what is for us a new candidate planet around Proxima that we call Proxima C. Mario Damaso of Italy's Observatory of Turin initially announced during the 2019 Breakthrough Discuss conference. A paper describing the potential planet appears today in the journal Science Advances. It's only a candidate, Damaso continued. This is very important to underline. Why do they say it's only a candidate? That would be because we can't definitively confirm that it is a planet. We know that something else is orbiting the star known as Proxima Centauri, but that doesn't mean it's definitively a planet. Because of the system itself, our distance from it, and our own technology at the moment, there is some margin for error as to what it could be. I know that may sound a bit pessimistic, but think about it like this. If we were able to map everything so well, why didn't we know about this sooner? I mean, we've known about Proxima Centauri and Proxima Centauri b for some time now, right? So how could we not know about this potential extra planet? Star mapping is not an exact science despite what people would love to tell you. And as others who have confirmed the strange signal near the star will tell you, the system may hold many more surprises. Even the closest planetary system to us may retain interesting surprises, said Fabio Del Sordo in an email. Study author and postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Physics at the University of Crete. Proxima Centauri hosts a planetary system that is much more complex than we knew and we do not know how many unknown features are waiting to be discovered. So let's assume that this is indeed a planet. What do we know about it based on the information we have gotten from these signals? Well, first and foremost, the planet is huge. It's what we call a super-Earth, or a planet that could be Earth-like in potentia, but it is so massive that it breaks the scales. In the case of the now dubbed Proxima C, the planet is roughly at six times the size of Earth. To be clear, that is a big planet. However, the reason it's dubbed a super-Earth and not compared to certain other planets is that though it's bigger than Earth, it's not as big as Uranus and Neptune, the two planets in our solar system more immediately bigger than Earth. Anyway, the question then becomes, if this is a planet and it is something we could live on, should we live on it? While it wouldn't be impossible to live on the planet, Proxima b still remains the best candidate. Why is that? 
because while Proxima b lives in the habitable zone where water could form without evaporating immediately due to the sun's rays, Proxima c lives outside what we call the snow line of the star. Basically, if you're near the snow line or beyond it, any water you could have turns to ice. And indeed, the position of Proxima c and estimates based on its size prove that it's either a snow planet or potentially an ice planet. Again, because it's still a candidate for being a planet, we don't know for sure. The problem, though, is that the location of Proxima c, approximately, is causing some serious confusion on how snowline planets form in regards to certain kinds of stars, like the red dwarf that it orbits around. The formation of a super-Earth well beyond the snowline challenges formation models, according to which the snowline is a sweet spot for the accretion of super-Earths due to the accumulation of icy solids at that location," said Mario Damaso, study author and postdoctoral researcher at Italy's National Institute for Astrophysics. Or it suggests that the protoplanetary disk was much warmer than usually thought. In general, there's nothing preventing the existence of Proxima c there where we spot it, but the formation and evolutionary history is a subject worthy of deeper investigation. Or in layman's terms, we don't fully get how Proxima c is existing where it potentially is based on what we know about solar systems forming, which believe it or not is something that happens to us quite a bit, especially in recent years. The universe still has There's plenty of things we don't understand. But let's get back on topic. Even with Proxima c likely being a planet that we can't build a colony on, more than likely, that doesn't mean that it's a planet we just ignore. After all, we just mentioned that it is a planet that could potentially lead to further explanations of how certain systems form. Plus, if it is a planet, then that would help redefine our galaxy. Proxima Centauri is the nearest star to the Sun, and this detection would make it the closest multi-planetary system to us, Del Sordo said. So even if it doesn't have global impact in terms of it being a place we can settle, it does have importance in helping redefining the systems near us and how we look at them. And technically, if Proxima c is out there and is a planet, that could mean a Proxima d or e. You never know what might just be out there in the stars. Before we dive deeper into the Proxima Centauri system videos, we see may have you wondering why is it so strange that we found it? That's because most exoplanets, planets that are outside our own solar system, discovered so far have been glimpsed via the transit method. That is, they're detected because they lie edge onto our line of sight to their host stars, and astronomers can detect a minute dip in the host star's light when the planet crosses in front of it. No such dip in brightness has been seen for Proxima Centauri. Instead, to find this star's planets, astronomers have had to use a second planet hunting technique called the radial velocity method. Radial velocity refers to a slight wobble in the star's motion as seen from Earth, caused by the gravity of unseen planets tugging on it. This is how Proxima Centauri b was found and now seemingly Proxima Centauri c. This detection method helped determine things about Proxima Centauri c that we couldn't learn from other methods. For example, while Proxima Centauri b orbits its star in about 11.2 Earth days, Proxima Centauri c orbits its star every 5.2 Earth years, which greatly helps show why we couldn't find out about it in the usual methods. Speaking of usual methods, there are telescopes coming out soon that will possibly be able to give us a better look at Proxima Centauri c. Usually these kinds of planets are too far away to look at, or they're in such proximity to their stars that they have a glare to them that just makes them look like a giant ball of light. However, the distance that Centauri c has Proxima Centauri itself is so far that it's out of the range of the glare. Proxima c could become a prime target for follow-up and characterization with next-generation direct imaging instrumentation due to the large maximum angular separation of one arc second from the parent star. The candidate planet represents a challenge for the models of super-Earth formation and evolution. Furthermore, there is a plan to make a 3D model map of the galaxy, and using the formation we have, it could further help paint a picture of what Proxima Centauri c could be and what it would mean if it is a planet. What does that mean? When's the last time you seriously thought about your browser? Does it look like this? With Chrome. 
Well, as you hopefully know, planets have a way of affecting things. And even if it isn't a place we can just go and live in, it is a place we can study and see how it affects the system around it. Not unlike how Jupiter and Mars help keep a massive asteroid belt in place, or Neptune locks down the Kuiper asteroid belt, and so on and so forth. All of which could be vital in truly determining if Alpha Centauri b is a place we can go and colonize one day. Don't we know if it's able to be colonized or not? Well, yes and no. On one hand, we do know the location of Proxima Centauri b, and we know that the distance from the Sun puts the planet in the habitable zone where water could exist, but there's a problem. You see, while Proxima Centauri b is only 1.3 times the size of Earth, which makes it not too much bigger overall and takes just 11.2 days to go around the Sun, which means we'll have a lot of years if we live there, the real problem is the star itself. As noted, it's a red dwarf star, and that means that the Sun has certain pros and cons, including dimmer light and heat compared to our yellow dwarf sun that we know and love. Now, because of distance, a lot of those issues are solved, but Proxima Centauri has been known to have solar flares, massive bursts of heat and radiation that can decimate planets. And these kinds of flares are known to destroy atmospheres. And if Proxima Centauri b doesn't have an atmosphere or an incredibly thin atmosphere, then there's no way we can live there. For a reference on this, look to Mars. Mars has an atmosphere, but it's incredibly thin due to various factors over its lifetime. This means that its atmosphere doesn't have the gases we need to breathe, not to mention the atmosphere has a hole that opens up every few years and drains what little water vapor and gases have been stored up. Plus, because of proximity to the star, that would mean that we'd be exposing ourselves to potential radiation levels that are far beyond what we have to deal with here on Earth. And if that is true, and the atmosphere and magnetosphere isn't there to protect the planet, forget water being around. No life could survive there without severe protection. I know this all sounds grim, but this is the reality of trying to find another Earth amongst the stars with the technology that we have. We can only do so much from our position, and we have to make guesses, estimates, and more to determine whether something is feasible or not. Could we live in the Alpha Centauri system one day? Sure, but it's going to take a while, and a lot more research to see what else may be lying in wait in the system should we get there. Thanks for watching everyone. What do you think about Proxima Centauri C? Do you think The closest star system to the solar system is Proxima Centauri. And we've known for a couple of years that it probably has one planet, but just in the last couple of weeks, astronomers have confirmed that not only does it have the one planet, but it has a second, two planets around the closest star to the sun, and one of them's in the habitable zone. Astronomers have discovered thousands of exoplanets and still need to confirm thousands more. And over the coming decades, we'll probably learn of millions of planets orbiting stars we've never heard of. And that's why it's reassuring to know that astronomers are learning a tremendous amount about the closest star system to our own, Proxima Centauri. In fact, we now know of two planets orbiting the red dwarf star, one of which is in the habitable zone. The sun is the closest star to the Earth, obviously, but after that, the next closest is Proxima Centauri, just 4.2 light years away from Earth. It's part of the Alpha Centauri system, which contains three stars, a binary pair of sun-like stars and a third red dwarf star. Because of its wide orbit, Proxima Centauri happens to be closest to the solar system right now. In 2016, astronomers discovered evidence that Proxima Centauri has a planet, now named Proxima Centauri b. And this planet joined the ranks of confirmed planets just a few days ago. And just a few months ago, astronomers found evidence of a second planet named Proxima Centauri c, and this planet has also been confirmed. Most of the planets we know of have been discovered using the transit method, where astronomers study the light from a distant star and watch how it flickers as a planet passes directly in front of it. Unfortunately, the planets around Proxima Centauri don't line up so nicely, and they needed other methods to find them. As a planet orbits a star, it pulls it back and forth with its gravity. This causes the spectrum of the starlight to change slightly towards the blue or red ends of the spectrum. 
With enough measurements, it's possible to detect planets, even if they're not passing directly in front of the star from our perspective. This is the radial velocity method. This is incredibly difficult to do, but it's slightly easier to do with dwarf stars because their mass is lower and the gravitational influence from the planet is more detectable. However, red dwarf stars are highly variable with powerful solar flares. The actual surface of the star can heave up and down like a stormy ocean, sending false velocity signals. The first planet, Proxima Centauri b was discovered using this radial velocity method, but the evidence provided just a hint that the planet was there. This time, however, astronomers made detailed observations using the world's most powerful observatory, the Very Large Telescope in Chile. Using the Espresso instrument to study the starlight in high resolution, they were able to confirm the existence of the planet without a doubt. Furthermore, they were able to confirm the planet's mass to be about 20% more massive than the Earth, orbiting Proxima Centauri within the star's habitable zone. This means that it's in the range where liquid water could exist on the surface of the planet. Of course, we need to put in a few caveats here. The actual presence of liquid water on the surface of a planet depends on its atmospheric density. Both Mars and Venus are theoretically located within the sun's habitable zone, and you wouldn't want to visit either of them to go surfing. The other issue is that Proxima Centauri itself is a flare star with constant stellar winds and devastating X-ray flares. Proxima Centauri b orbits the star at just 0.04 astronomical units, which is about a tenth the distance from the Sun to Mercury. In other words, you've got a planet much closer to the star that's much nastier than our own Sun, and it would need a powerful magnetosphere to protect its atmosphere from being stripped away and blown off into space. Furthermore, the planet is probably tidally locked, permanently showing only one face to the star. This isn't a total disaster though, as it looks like these tidally locked worlds can have enough ocean and atmospheric circulation to keep temperatures on the day side reasonable for life, like a steamy jungle where the sun never sets. Clearly, we need better observations and search for the water itself. In fact, by studying the planets around Proxima Centauri, we'll get a better handle on the chances of life forming on red dwarfs, which are common across the Milky Way. First planet confirmed. But what about the second planet? I'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Hadi Zulfangari, Martin Gygax, Samuel Dupree, Jim Irwin, and the rest of our 853 patrons for their generous support. Want our videos? As I said, it's been an exciting time to be studying Proxima Centauri, since astronomers have discovered not one, but two planets orbiting the star. And the journey to find this second planet is pretty cool. Back in mid-January 2020, a team of astronomers published preliminary data that said that they might have found a second planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. They estimated that it was around six times more massive than the Earth and took almost 2,000 days to orbit around the star at a distance of about 1.5 astronomical units. This would be a dramatically different planet and not habitable. But it was a tantalizing hint and not a confirmation, but it took the hard work of astronomer Fritz Benedict using older data from the Hubble Space Telescope to actually get all the details. Dr. Benedict had made intensive studies of Proxima Centauri back in 1999 using Hubble's fine guidance sensors. Normally, these are used to point the space telescope accurately at a target for long periods of time, but they can also be used for astrometry calculating the positions and motions of stars in relation to us. He used Hubble sensors to watch Proxima Centauri and see if there were any planets tugging on it with their gravity, shifting its trajectory slightly. This is the same technique that ESA's Gaia mission will be using to potentially find tens of thousands of planets in the coming years. In his original research, Benedict looked for planets that took up to 1,000 days to orbit Proxima Centauri, and he didn't see any. So he shelved the data and went on with other projects. But with this newest announcement that there could be a planet with a 2000 day orbit, he went back through his data and the answer was there all along. He found the signal for a planet that takes 1,907 days to orbit the star. At the same time, astronomers using the Very Large Telescope in Chile used another instrument called Sphere to actually take pictures of the planet at multiple points in its orbit. 
Although they did see an object in their images, the picture was confusing, unusually large and diffuse. But with the Hubble data confirming its mass and orbit, they got the confirmation that they were indeed looking at a planet. It might be surrounded by a cloud of dust, but an even more interesting idea is that it's surrounded by a huge set of rings, and that explains its shape. Three separate data points combine together to tell us there's a planet with seven times the mass of the Earth orbiting Proxima Centauri every 1,907 days. And it might even have rings. Amazing. So here we are in the middle of 2020, firm in the knowledge that there are not one, but two planets orbiting Proxima Centauri, the closest star outside the solar system. And not only that, but one of these planets are orbiting within the star's habitable zone. I really hope interstellar mission concepts like Breakthrough Starshot can get going soon. I really want to see close-up pictures of these worlds. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here? Support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single... So it's videos are over and it's time for a quiz. But you're just going to see this. You're this like time, this time. Like where is the quiz? You usually just put it on the paper itself. That's huh. what the surprise is exactly. I have put it in an application that I will share the link of and you will join. Oh, yes. Um Quiz this no dark quiz this not quiz this. Hey, I have two doubts. Uh, can I ask? I have yeah. one doubt. Okay, ask, ask, ask. No problem. Uh, how many? Uh, what is the distance between here to the planet? Yet and Proxima Century. Yes. Okay. What is the distance between them? <laughs> Yeah. But already in Naman, but already some people presented about these exoplanets. No, no, it's uh, it's part of his series, da. It's part of Naman. Part of my series, Dad. How would I know that? Series is a draft planet only. It's not an exoplanet. So the first. Can I ask my doubt? Yeah, yeah. Okay. My doubt, pa. Yeah, he will do it. He will do it. Just put it in chat box. Uh, Sanjay, what Jago, is which, that? Which link is it, Jago? It's quizzes or Google Forms? Maybe. It's not even neither. Literally neither. Yeah. It's a very unique one. As well. I suppose none of us have ever used it. <laughs> copy the link. Okay, something and... new. Oh. Word wall. Word wall. I know that. Not even word wall. Okay, something new. Nearpod.com. Share, share the screen. I want, like, I want to see how it looks. Okay. Like. And meanwhile, you can put your questions in the chat box. Sanjay, you can put your question in the chat box. Okay. Let's share the screen. This is how it looks like. Oh, nice. Join, guys. Yes, yeah, so, so sorry, some black and white color. It's crazy. Yeah. With all the planet. And... Ah, I can get that. It is not. Really... It's like it colonizing is... more or Mars. It's just a space background. And you can see on the top there's a finish line. Nice. Yes. So, yeah. I'll put it in live as well. It's more like this, but it's more to the background. Okay, one is come. The answer came. I also okay. have joined. Yeah, I yeah, have also okay. joined. Okay, uh, Mathirish came. Data check your network. Coming slowly. Well, we'll wait, I guess. Quickly join. Okay. 
ओके हर्षद जॉइंट रिया जॉइंट अजित जॉइंट वाओ अलाउड टॉपिक दिस एवरीवन दिस कीप्स पॉपिंग एट अ रन Yeah, I have also joined. Then, uh, yeah, 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 I saw the of target space. Yeah, yeah. Ria, you can put this, put this in a uh, Isha's Isha group. Yeah, just I put it. Yeah. <laughs> see, I can see a lot of people here. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is. Yeah, play yeah. some game like this. Ah. Uh, uh, I, I love playing this game. I don't remember this name. Let's can join. People so people in live oh. YouTube live can also join. <laughs> wow, this is so nice. I think people got Amrita. Oh, Sanjay. <laughs> hey, when will we start? Eh? It how many join? Twelve connected. Yeah. Wait for two to three more minutes, and then we'll start off. Join, guys. Wait, yeah. I'm just looking at this beautiful, uh, cute, cute moonjis out there. <laughs> That's what we'll become when we grow up. When we have astronauts, we're going to fly to the moon. Are we in the moon? I think I can start. Yes, we are on the moon. Earth is right there. Saturn. Some crazy. Comet. Star. Oh, the star. Put this in the group. They start the quiz. The number thirteen has joined. Okay, I'll start it. Okay. Starting. Are you ready, everyone? Okay. Yeah. Oh, the leaderboard is ready. Yeah? The faster this. Okay. The Rians is in the lead. Oh, what method are you using this time? Oh, nice! I can see some small rays also. <laughs> yeah, it's like a race. The top will win. They will come as the leader for top three. Maximum century cannot do power nine. Is it true or false? Not even a poll. You have to be very accurate with your words. The slower you answer, the less points you will get. The slump sort of like quizzes, but it's different. I'll mute the sound. I'll mute the sound. Let's see a Proxima Century mystery. Okay. How far is Proxima Centauri from Earth? I should have said the sun here, but okay. Amrita is in the lead. Who was the planet first reported? Yeah, Proxima. Who reported the Proxima Centauri C first? <laughs> I just somehow got the idea of using your yeah. board and see how it looks like. Completely. Okay. 
Okay. Then few of them did not answer. Okay. Which instrument are used to discover pattern? Right. Well, Harshal. you can see the winner. Harshal, the winner. How can I jump out of Harshal? Okay. Hey, can, can, can I ask my doubts? Da? Yeah, you can ask. Yeah, let him complete this. Okay. Uh -huh. Which rank do I am, uh, Naman? You suppose you are fourth or fifth, I don't remember. Close. I am fifth. Okay. I am fourth. Yeah. Okay, quiz time. Uh, quiz time. Yes, sir. Oh, the quiz was awesome. Yeah, I loved it. Sir, I have two doubts, sir. Very interesting question. You can ask your doubts. Yeah, so uh, uh, I think, uh, I know I saw two words in uh, your presentation. I didn't know the meaning of it. So can I ask the meaning? Yeah, you can ask. So the first one is star shot. Yeah, star shot. Yeah, star shot is like a mission to explore the exoplanets. Okay. Yeah, um, okay. Oh. That was a mission. Yeah, it's a mission. Okay. Then the second one is albedo. Albedo. Okay. So albedo. Albedo. You know can you okay. The proportion of the it's like somewhat like the well, like an area of the incident light or radiation that is detected by a surface. Typically that of a planet or moon. Most you know, likely, uh, uh, you guys, you know, I was teaching about uh, how to access Chandrayaan images. In that, you can find Albedo. Yes, sir. Yes, if you click on it, you can actually see the Albedo. What is it exactly? It's like the what proportion exactly? of any radiation or light that is reflected by um, a surface. Okay. It can be asteroids, it can be planets, it can be moons, you know, you name it. Oh, okay. Okay, any other doubts? No, but in a in a video, the in a video or uh, your uh, presentation, you mentioned that there is uh, a chance we can survive on uh, Proxima. Yeah, but it is not guaranteed. Like but can you ask. in the presentation, it, we had an option like maybe. True, false, but uh, the option was false. Yeah, because like I said, it can be colonized, but it is not guaranteed. But for now, most likely it is, yes. Yeah, but in the presentation, you, uh, it was mentioned that false. Uh, we cannot colonize. No, 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 we can. It is just the presentation, not guaranteed. The quiz. Like... Let me explain this in a easier way. So, okay, it's all um, assumption, that It's all assumption. Unless we go there directly, we won't. Yes, a good absurd yeah, assumption. Yeah. So, it's not guaranteed. Like, yes, we can colonize. No, we can colonize. Oh, but, okay. like, the expectation is yes. Because we have a lot more details to discuss. Okay. I mean, to be discovered on Proxima Centauri. So, but we know guaranteed on Proxima Centauri B that it can be colonized. And, uh, So, uh, another question is, you told that Proxima is huge, uh, is huge. Any idea how much, meaning how much measurement it would be? How big it is, uh, Proxima? Proxima? Is that your question? Yeah, measurement of it. Okay. How many? Uh, uh, likewise, uh, Harjit also asked, how yeah. far is Proxima? Yeah, how far? Um, far? I think it's four to... So the radius for Proxima Centauri 
I remember. So I just checked. Around 107,000 kilometers. Yeah, and the moon says uh, it's, uh, it's a 12.5% uh, mass of sun. The mass oh, is huge. Okay. And the radius is around um, 107,000 yes. kilometers. But is it an ice planet or a snow planet? It's a, are you talking about Proxima Centauri or Proxima Centauri C? But are you about the stars or the yes. planets? E C C C. Okay. I'm, now I'm talking about the um the C Proxima Centauri C planet it is confirmed that it is there, but we exactly don't know whether um let's say how big it is or how what is the radius. We only know minor details that the temperature but is that nine Kelvin. You see the planet itself, we can say that if it is a cold sorry, ice planet. Or something like a snow planet. Oh, yeah. I did say that the temperature is 39 Kelvin. So, it will be an ice planet. Yeah. 39 Kelvin is negative 104 degrees. It's like minus, uh, minus Thank you. No problem. Any other doubts? Anyone? Uh, for Harijit question, the answer is in the chat box. It is like 4.246 light years away from Yeah, 4.2 light years away from us. So anyone else? Questions for Naman? If no questions, and, you can share your feedback. Yeah, please YouTube share your live. feedbacks uh, here and also in uh, YouTube live as well. And well done, Naman. That's a neat presentation. The video showed much more uh, visual representation. Uh, well done. Well done. Yeah, that was the amazing purpose. presentation. I wanted to include Anna. minimal information and more like... Yeah, visual. Yeah. It's an amazing presentation, Anna. That was the major change. Like I added the near pod. Yeah, that near pod nice is presentation. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, if you want, you can also create your own near pod. Yes, I think uh, most of them will start creating near pod hereafter. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naman. That's a awesome presentation on his series, uh, planets and uh, solar system. And beyond. That's uh, his uh, chapter number nine. Now we have one new presenter who is going to uh, present today. That is our Tarun. So Tarun is one of the um, uh, one of the young researchers through student uh, completed all the nine uh, levels. And uh, he is uh, trained under our trainer Tom, alias uh, Tom, that's Abhishek. So he is one of the pets of uh, Abhishek. Um, and he is going to present on the topic dwarf planets. And he is from the school, Ida Skardo School, Velu, and grade three. So we have very few students who is who did the presentation earlier, one uh, from grade two and one from grade three. So this is uh, Tarun is grade three. And Tarun, so the stage is all yours. Thank you. So you can share your screen. Um, this is the first presentation, so don't worry about it. So technically, we will. And uh, so we have this thing. So till all the, so we make, we start with the students, we start with solo presentation. They do like a lot of, uh, so a lot of research topics, to study, study topics related to aerospace and aeronautics. Slowly, they get to form teams of two, three. Tarun, you can uh, switch on your screen as well so that uh, when you present, uh, audience can see your face. Tarun, you are muted.
Yes. So this is Karan's first presentation. Yes. Karan, you can you see my presentation? Yes, yes. Okay. So welcome to the presentation, everybody. I this is Bob. I mean, this is Bob Planets by Space and Times. Presenter Tavun S. Introducing members of Space and Science, Tavun S, which is me, and the CEO and founder, Harsha. He is also the CEO and founder. And special thanks to Vice Astra to the SPOC team and my tutor, Tom, Vice Astra Young Researchers Group team, and the monitor of the session, Jaku. Introduction and types. Dwarf planets are similar to the solar system's eight planets, but they are just a bit smaller. Here are some of the dwarf planets Pluto, Ceres, Hermia. Maki Maki and Elis. So these are the pictures of them. And these are the rough planets we are going to discuss about. So number one, Pluto. Feature. Pluto's features are, I mean, some of the features of Pluto are Pluto's mass is 130500000000. 000 billion kg, which is 0 0.00218 multiplied by Earth. Known moons, five notable moons, Chavin, Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx. Surface temperature is minus 229 degrees Celsius. Pluto, internal structure. Scientists believe that Pluto's internal structure is differentiated with the rough material having sunk into a dense core, encompassed by a mantle of water ice. It is possible that such heating continues even today. So here is Pluto's theoretical structure. This is the outer crust, frozen nitrogen. This is the frozen, this is the, this is the frozen layer, water, and this is the Go solid walk. For long, Pluto's surface. For a long time, astronomers did not know much about its surface. But the Hubble Space Telescope shows a reddish, yellowish gray planet with a curious bright spot that may be rich in carbon monoxide. <clears throat> Pluto. I mean, Pluto's moon. Pluto has a very large moon, which is nearly half of its size, called Charon. Charon's orbit is, is around, Charon's orbit is around, Pluto takes, Pluto takes 6.4 Earth days and one Pluto rotation, which is Pluto day. Scientists suggest that Pluto is covered with nitrogen, while Charon is covered with ordinary plain water ice. So, Pluto's origin. The main hypothesis behind the development of Pluto and Charon is that a rising Pluto was hit by another Pluto-sized object. When most of the combined matter became Pluto, the rest spun off to become Sharon. So here's the picture of Pluto. And number two, 
see this features features on mass nine four three zero 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 billion kg which is zero point zero 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 one five multiplied by earth diameter nine hundred forty kilometers or the distance four four one three seven zero 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 Oh, kilometers, which is two point seventy seven AU. Surface temperature minus one hundred and five degrees Celsius. Services features currently Ceres Ceres is the smallest dwarf planet, but still it is the largest object in the asteroid belt. This is located between the orbits of the planets Mars and Jupiter, which is a gas giant, uh, like all your, okay. and Jupiter, which is a gas giant. It is composed of rock and ice. Ceres, Ceres has a density of two point zero nine grams per centimeter cube. Leading scientists to conclude that approximately a quarter of its weight is water. This should this would give the dwarf planet see this more fresh water than a blue planet, the Earth. History and discovery. Sicilian astronomer Giuseppe or uh, Giuseppe Piazzi discovered a dwarf planet and named it Ceres after the Roman goddess of corn and harvests. So what is Ceres made up of? The thin dusty crust is thought to be composed of rock, while a rocky inner core lies at the center. center. Observations of Ceres from Earth indicate that the surface has clays which in iron, So here's Ceres' theoretical structure. This is the thin, dusty outer crust. This is the water ice layer and the rocky inner pit. So here is the picture of Ceres. Hermia, mass 4006. 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 billion kg 0 0.00066 multiplied by earth equatorial diameter 1960 kilometers to 1518 kilometers no moons he yaka and namaka or namaka surface temperature minus 241 degrees celsius here we and Hyumia's rotational speed, as well as its collisional origin, makes it one of the of one of the densest dwarf planet discovered in our solar system till day date. Moon, the moons of Hyumia. Hyumia's two moons are way more smaller than itself. Both the moons have the same size, just zero point five percent of. Hyumia. Composition. Researchers and space scientists believe the fact that Hyumia is made of rock, which is secured with a thin icy outer shell. Special features. Hyumia is the fastest large object in the whole solar system. As Hyumia is too far, its structure is completely theoretical, so no details about its structure. So, but we do have Hyumia's picture. Here are some of the facts about Mak so Makemake. Make. Here are some of the facts about Makemake. Makemake Make was first um, Makemake was first discovered and observed in March 2005 by a team of astronomers at an observatory called Paloma Observatory, officially known as 2005 FY9. The small planet yard was nicknamed as Easter Bunny by the team. 
Okay, Maki. Characteristics. Okay, Maki is one of the most biggest objects in this outer part of the solar system where the gas ions and ice ions are located. Maki Maki is, ju is just a bit smaller and dimmer than Pluto. Maki Maki takes around 306 Earth years to revolve around the sun. Location. Similar to all dwarf planets, except for Ceres, our dwarf planet, Makemake, travels through the Kuiper Belt, the region of ice and rock at the very outer edge of our solar system, moons. Uh, well, actually, Makemake has no moon. This makes it difficult to find out its exact mass and density. Rotation. Maki Maki spins on its axis once in every 22.5 hours, with, the, with a day just shorter than Earth's. So, Maki Maki's structure, as Maki Maki's too far, its structure is completely theoretical, so no details about its structure. Elvis. Eris is a plutoid, that is a trans-Neptunian dwarf planet. It is named after a Greek goddess, moons. Eris has only one moon, which is called Dysomnia. It is named after Eris' daughter. Eris. Eris has an orbital period of 560 Earth years. Albedo. Eris has a surface far more reflective than Earth's snow. This suggests, suggests that it may be covered with a thin, thin ice layer, Albedo. Surface. Eris almost appears grey like all the other dwarf planets in our solar system. Infrared and infrared light from Eris reveal the presence of methane ice. The surface of Eris may be similar to Pluto's. And as Eris is too far, uh, its structure is completely theoretical, so no details about its structure. Other dwarf planets. We have actually set we have actually seven dwarf planets, but we have only discussed about five. The remaining two dwarf planets are namely and unnamed V774104. Fun facts. Pluto was named by an 11-year-old girl, Venetia, or Venetia, after the Roman god of the underworld. Dwarf planets orbit on a different plane and not where the other eight planets are, going over and below them. Humia also appears to have, dark, have a dark red spot that may contain minerals and organic compounds. All the things in the asteroid belt could fit in Eris, even though it is smaller than our moon. So here's a small summary video which will help you to get a better understanding on the topic. The, the play button is in the left uh, bottom. Click, click on the play button. Thousands of years ago, ancient astronomers looked up at the sky and realized that some of the things they thought were stars were moving in ways they didn't expect. They called these errant objects planets, a word that means 
wandering stars. Five of these objects, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, were identified and named in ancient times. Through the centuries, the tools astronomers used to study the skies became better and stronger, and three more planets were identified, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. However, as astronomers continued to study the outer reaches of our solar system, they came to a startling realization. Pluto wasn't alone in the space beyond Neptune. As more and more objects were discovered near Pluto that were close to Pluto in size, astronomers realized that they couldn't all be planets. Something had to be done. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union created a new category, dwarf planets. For an object to qualify as a dwarf planet, it only had to meet two criteria. One, it must orbit around the Sun. Two, it must be massive enough for its own gravity to pull it into a spherical or mostly spherical shape. Planets had a third qualification they had to meet. They must have cleared their orbits of other objects. Since dwarf planets often share their orbits with asteroids, comets, debris, and even other dwarf planets, this third point made it easier to tell the difference between a planet and a dwarf planet. There are currently five officially recognized dwarf planets in the solar system. Ceres, Pluto, Eris, Haumea, and Makemake. Of those five, Ceres was discovered first in 1801. That's because Ceres is located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, making it easier to observe using the telescopes of the time, and the only dwarf planet in the inner solar system. When it was discovered, Ceres was heralded as the fifth planet from the Sun, and Jupiter was pushed to the sixth position. This new order only lasted a year before another new planet was observed near Ceres, then another, then another. Within a few decades, dozens of new objects have been discovered between Mars and Jupiter. By the 1850s, astronomers decided enough was enough and reclassified all of the objects in the asteroid belt, including Ceres, as minor planets. Following the IAU's decision in 2006, Ceres was reclassified again as a dwarf planet. It is the largest object in the asteroid belt and contains 25% of the asteroid belt's mass. It completes one rotation every nine hours and one orbit around the Sun every 4.6 years. Ceres has no moons or rings, but it does have a very thin atmosphere, which contains traces of water vapor. It is the smallest of the recognized dwarf planets, with a diameter of 590 miles or 950 kilometers. Ceres became the first of the dwarf planets to be visited by a spacecraft when the Dawn space probe entered its orbit on March 6, 2015. Pluto is the largest and most well-known dwarf planet. It was regarded as the ninth planet from its discovery in 1930 until its reclassification in 2006. Pluto is small and made of rocky ice and it rotates slowly, with a day that is 6.4 Earth days long. Because it is usually farther from the Sun than Neptune, it takes 248 years for it to complete a single orbit around the Sun. Pluto has a thin atmosphere made of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. Like Ceres, Pluto has no rings. Unlike Ceres, Pluto has five moons, including Charon which is so large that Pluto and Charon are sometimes called binary or double dwarf planets. Pluto was visited by the New Horizons spacecraft in July of 2015, 
capturing stunning images of the former planet and raising new questions about the composition and structure of this cold and distant world. Eris was named for the Greek goddess of discord and strife, which is fitting since the discovery of Eris is what prompted arguments about Pluto's status as a planet. When it was discovered in 2005, NASA initially called Eris the 10th planet, but discoveries of multiple other Dysnomia. Eris and and raising new questions about the comp. Unlike Ceres, Pluto has five moons, including Charon, which is so large that Pluto and Charon are sometimes called binary or double dwarf planets. Pluto was visited by the New Horizons spacecraft in July of 2015 capturing stunning images of the former planet and raising new questions about the composition and structure of this cold and distant world. Eris was named for the Greek goddess of discord and strife, which is fitting since the discovery of Eris is what prompted arguments about Pluto's status as a planet. When it was discovered in 2005, NASA initially called Eris the 10th planet, but discoveries of multiple other large objects in the area caused them to reconsider. Eris is slightly smaller than Pluto, but it is estimated to be more massive, and it is believed to be covered with methane ice. It has one known moon, Dysnomia. Eris and its moon are two of the most distant known objects in the solar system, traveling much farther from the sun than Pluto does. It is estimated that Eris will take 558 years to complete one orbit around the Sun. The discovery of another dwarf planet, Haumea, was announced in 2005. Unlike the rest of the dwarf planets, Haumea is oblong instead of shaped like a ball. Haumea appears to have water ice on its surface and is one of the fastest spinning large objects in the solar system completing a turn once every four hours. Its orbit is only a little longer than Pluto's, taking 284 years to travel once around the Sun. Haumea, named for the Hawaiian goddess of fertility and childbirth, has two known moons. The moons, Hayaka and Namaka, are named for two of the goddess's daughters. The fifth and final dwarf planet currently recognized is Makemake. Makemake was also discovered in 2005 and was named for the creator god in the mythology of the Rapa Nui people of Easter Island. Like the other dwarf planets of the Kuiper Belt, Makemake is covered in ices, made of methane, ethane, and possibly nitrogen ice. Although its diameter is only about two-thirds of Pluto's, Makemake's icy surface makes it the second brightest object in the Kuiper Belt, after Pluto. In 2016, it was discovered that Makemake has at least one moon, which is as yet unnamed. Astronomers believe that there are hundreds of objects in the solar system that are likely to be dwarf planets. As scientists continue to study them, it is likely that more and more will be added to our list. Until then, I hope you enjoyed learning about Ceres, Pluto, Eris, Haumea, and Makemake, the dwarf planets of the solar system. Goodbye till next time! So I hope you enjoyed the video. And here's the image of all the dwarf planets. Okay, Maki Maki, Halmea, Ceres, Eris, and Pluto. And then once again, thanks to
the young researchers crew team and the and the the figure the spark team and due to tom and the monitor of our session chuku so what so, tom here i just in asked him to join him oh. tom you are your boy is grown up now so he is doing his own presentations and he has his own company now tarun introduce your company to tom oh, oh sorry sir and you done your yes yes sir i was also a student yes 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 so yes, what are you my color is a beautiful presentation tarun actually thank you tom and that was so great Hi. and this is the first time uh, you are taking session for me in the past ninth set right <laughs> yeah he yeah. started taking session yeah mm. like I, and uh, this was really amazing tarun you did a lot of work that's beautiful actually so nice very good thank you and let all of you go and do let's go peace and science I repeat it yeah, amazing presentation tarun peace and science tom that's thank his you. company name that's tarun's company name oh, space wow. and science space and science okay tarun can you give me one job over there space and science you already promised me right you will start a company and you will get me a job over there yes soon 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 he will <laughs> so we are guiding him through we are taking him there yeah. super very good nice congratulations and also all all other young researchers uh, all the best best wishes for your presentation yeah and you have a lot of your old students also yeah yeah oh, really? hi tom yes hello yes, hello you remember me we... i was in art uh, on session Even i was with tom i was with tom you know <laughs> we have a lot of members here uh, unfortunately and, your name was abhishek right you remember ah, abhishek Yeah, I have the short term memory. I can't remember you. Really, really sorry. <laughs> uh, you you teach me set one and set two. You oh, teach because, me set one true. and level one also. You taught me. Wow, lot of my old. Level two. <laughs> yeah, you nice. taught me level one and level two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very yeah. good, very good. Nice. Uh, Hi, okay. sir. Do you remember me? Ah, yes. Da, uh, obviously. Like once you, yeah, I could see. Ah, uh, yeah. I remember. I think so. Vignesh and you, Sanjay. Yeah, I remember. Asher today, Asher. Of me. course, I remember you, da. <laughs> my, uh, my team consists of me and Asher. And I'm um, happy to see you, Tom. I enjoyed all nine sessions. Very good, and uh, I'm also happy to meet, uh, to be at your presentation, Tarun. Very this nice. Is the first presentation and it's on live as well. Wow, that nice. That is the memory. Even like after ten years, once he becomes like a big company CEO, or he will look, he can look back. See, he can tell people, see, this is my first presentation. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll say, Tarun, the CEO of this company, he was yes. nice. Space and scientists. <laughs> yeah. Well done, well done, Tarun. So all of you go unmute. Let's give a huge round of applause for awesome. amazing presentation. Jagu, Jagu, Jagu. Let's copyright. Copyright. Be ready. You have to copyright. Okay. <laughs> Just one warning. Right? The you. The YouTube copyright. Yeah, yeah. yeah many that, people are. I will trim it out. I will trim it out. So yeah, that it people. Out. I think Jagu, you need to instruct in the young research. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I right. Agree. So when you use that. Uh, no uh, more videos. Uh, yeah, videos should not be. Yeah, yeah. Make your own. Uh, you can you can make your own ones like subject we did last time. Yes, yes. You can you use can uh, actually, videos yeah. from ISR or NASA, uh, but from other YouTube channels, then we may have uh, copyright issues. Copyright. But issues. try using videos from NASA website, ISR website, all these international space agencies. They will provide uh, educational content, right? So we can use yeah. that. Otherwise, yeah. no. But I loved the presentation, the way he put it up. The way he uh, cutely put all the things out. Well done. Jagu. Well done, Tarun. That's a beautiful okay, presentation. Okay, Jagu. Thank you, everyone. Jagu, introduce our uh, my company and everyone's company to Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 
He knows the Tom. Tom knows your company. Target. Yeah, I'm already getting a lot more uh, job offers, uh, Jaco. Maybe I should uh, consider that. No, you can become a mentor, Tom. You can like uh, you are one of the. Yeah, mentors. three job offers. Tom, yeah, free, free. Tom, Tom, free, free, free. Maybe you should talk with Jaco. First, you should let me go. Only then I can come to your company. I am not leaving Tom. Tom. <laughs> Tom and give him ten thousand. Can take him as mentor. <laughs> But he cannot. He is not going to leave. He's not going to yeah, leave. Yeah, I am not going to leave. Agu, send Tom to. I'm going to fight. You can come up with one uh, good solution. Who's whose company I should uh, go for first? Okay. You can be. How <laughs> many people are in two companies here? So you. Tom, you can be part of all the companies as uh, like yeah. You mentor. can be part of all the companies. I can be as a mentor in uh, all the yeah. companies. Right? Then that will be great. Yes. Yes. So it don't be it don't be a problem for Vice Astra Aerospace also. Because that's our full time work anyway. Vice Astra full time work is. Ah. This is our full time. And third by third even. Four companies here. We have aerospace now, target space, uh, space I and uh, uh, space and sciences. Yeah. <laughs> done, done, done. So well done, Tarun. That's a beautiful presentation. It's very good. Cool. Your next boy is also going to present, do his first presentation. That's our Harshad. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Harshad, uh, all the best for you. I'll try to stay here because I have to go right now. But I'll try to yeah. stay here. Yeah, you can stay watch in live. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll watch it. I'll try to watch it. Like, okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. all the best for everyone. See you soon. I'll be watching in live. Bye, Tom. Bye, yes, Tom. Bye, Tom. Okay, let me introduce our next presenter. That's his first presentation. That's Harshad Jayan from Chennai Public School, Grade Five, and he is yeah he is from this company, Space and Sciences. Harshad, he is going to present yes. on the topic Multiverse Theory. Harshad, the stage is all yours. Yes, sir. Jabu. Sir, Jaggu. <laughs> Jaggu gets irritated when somebody calls him sir. <laughs> yeah. I noted. I noted that every time. Uh, yeah, Jaggu. I itself sometimes call you sir. One day. And then one... Jaggu is like, yeah. not ja, yeah. not sir, it's Jaggu. <laughs> yeah. And one day if I call him Jaggu, no, he told that Jaggu would call me Jaggu, the super monkey. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. happened with me. Nice. Yes, sir. Multiverse theory by Harshad Jain. Yes. The origin of the universe. The origin of the universe. Theories say that two atoms collided and our universe was formed. But not only our universe was formed during this collision. Many small or big universes was formed too. This is our Big Bang, Watson. Um. This is our big bang one. The multiverse. In the third century BCE, the philosopher Chrysippus suggested that the world eternally expired and rege regenerated, effectively suggesting the existence of multiple universes across time. The concept of multiple Universes became more defined in the Middle Ages. The God particle. The God particle was formed by colliding two atoms, as said in the Big Bang theory. But who invented it? Does anyone know? Okay, it's Peter Higgs. The discovery of the Higgs particle by the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva has convinced physicists that the answer is resounding yes. Nearly a half century ago, Peter Higgs and a handful of other scientists would try to understand the origin of a basic physical feature. The multiverse theory. As we saw the God particle, the Big Bang world, and the multiverse, compared to each others, both are likely the same. In the picture of the God particle, center we can see a small black dot. 
here and some yellow lines going somewhere spreading. This image is small so we can see it with our eyes. But we humans can't see beyond our sight, beyond the sky. But in the theory they say two atoms collided and here also two atoms are collided. And so why can't beyond this our Big Bang ball there should be some multi universe. So I would like to invent a satellite which humans can travel beyond our universe and an astronaut suit to explore. I will surely invent the big satellite which has a maximum capacity to carry 20 people. If not that big, at least 10 people can fit in. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Well done, well done, uh, Harsha. That's a short and sweet, neat presentation. Very nicely done. Uh, so, audience, if you have any questions, you can ask Tarun. Uh, ask Harsha. Uh, Harsha, and uh, yeah. so, you have any quiz, Harsha? No, sir. Okay. Next time, okay. I'll get you a quiz. Yeah, 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 nice. Tarun, you can also start uh, doing quizzes for uh, audience. <clears throat> nice. Uh, well yes, done, Harshad. That's uh, Harshad's very first presentation. And uh, he's already part of this uh, company called Space and Sciences. Uh, the team members are Tarun and Harshad. Yes. And they both are uh, debut. This is their debut presentation. Both did a very good job. It's very neat, very confident and focused. Well done. All of you, let's go unmute and let's give a huge round of applause for Harsha. Awesome presentation. Well done, well done. And you can also put your feedbacks in the chat box, also in YouTube Live, because this is their first presentation. This is going to stay as a memory for a long time. Jagu is this amazing team? presentation. Jagu is this team presentation about you. Thank yes. you. No, no, this is not a team presentation. They will do it. Uh, later they, they okay. already asked for team presentation i asked them to go for solo first before team presentation okay nice nice well done tarun it's well amazing done, presentation amazing. and short presentation it's amazing. amazing well done and we have one more new presenter and she is one of the selected students from isha vidya school as I, I told uh, told uh, a lot of times, like uh, out of say thousand or plus students, they selected only sixty or seventy students. They given us to Vaishya Shastra to do this uh, program. Uh, Mahalakshmi is one such uh, talent. Uh, Mahalakshmi is yes. grade nine student from Isha Vidya Stutikorin, if I'm not wrong, and. Uh, her topic is dwarf planets. Yes, Mahalakshmi, you can. The stage is all yours. Yes, sir. Jaggo. Jaggo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can put it in Isha group saying uh, Mahalakshmi is presenting. No. Yeah. Namaskaram to everyone. First of all, I thanks to Isha Vidya School and Vai Sastra Aerospace team to give this great opportunity for me. I am Maharashmi from Tutukuri Isha Vidya from class 9 standard. Today I am going to talk about the draw planets. Topics we covered in this presentation are what is draw planets? What are the types of dwarf planets and about dwarf planets, Pluto, Ceres, Eris, Haumea, Mekme. Okay. What is dwarf planets? A dwarf planet is an a dwarf planet is an object in orbit around the sun that is large enough to have its own gravity pull itself into a round shape. 
generally as dwarf planet is smaller than mercury a dwarf planet may also orbit in a zone that has many other objects in it for example an orbit within the asteroid belt is in a zone with lots of other objects the term dwarf planet was coined by planetary scientist alan stern what are the types of dwarf planets the international astronomical union officially recognized five dwarf planets in the solar system pluto ceres eris huamia make make about dwarf planet pluto it is a dwarf planet in the kuiper belt a ring of ring bodies just beyond neptune was the first object to be discovered in the kuiper belt it is the large known pluto like or ice dwarf pluto was once considered the ninth and most distant planet from the sun however it has been reclassified and is now the largest known dwarf planet in the solar system pluto has a moon and diameter of 1473 miles only about 2 thirds as wide on earth's moon and less than 1/5 the diameter of earth surface features as observed by new horizon space probe include mountains that reach as high as 11000 feet similar to the rocky mountains on earth methane and nitrogen ice covers a major proportion of pluto surface these materials are not strong enough to support such an enormous peaks the scientists suspect that the mountains are formed on a bedrock of water ice pluto's surface is covered by methane however new horizon scientists have observed significant difference in the way the ice reflects light across the dwarf planet surface the ice rich terrain of this this dwarf planet is similar to that of a snake skin astronomers spotted similar features to its erosion formed features on mountainous terrain the pluto's features are much larger they are estimate to stand at the at 1050 feet tall while the features seen on earth are only a few minutes in size also there is a large heart shaped region on pluto's surface referred to as tombok regio whose left side is covered by carbon monoxide ice series this dwarf planet is largest in the asteroid belt sometimes it is assumed that series had been reclassified as the dwarf planet and therefore no longer considered an asteroid it must however be noted that even though series is the largest is the smallest of the known dwarf planets it, it is the largest object in the asteroid belt unlike other rocky bodies in the asteroid belt series is an oblate spherical object rounded with a rotational bulge around its equator it located in the inner portion of the solar system whereas other dwarf planets rest or lie the outer edges in the kuiper belt scientists have suspected that series might have an ocean and possibly an atmosphere this is due to the fact that although more asteroids are made of rock series revealed hints that it could contain water on its surface since 1991 though those hints remained uncon unconfirmed for more than 20 years scientific research further revealed that series has density of 2.09 g per cubic centimeters 
making scientists to conclude that approximately a quarter of its weight is water. Spectacle observation of series from Earth revealed that the surface contains iron rich, rich clays. Carbonates are also suspected to be present, making series one of the only bodies in the solar system known to contain these minerals the other two be, being mass and air, formed by a process that involves water and hot heat. Carbonates are considered excellent indicators of habitability. When sunlight heats the outer layer, the ice could go directly from solid state to the gaseous state through a process known as sublimation. Eris. This drop planet is one of the largest known drop planet in the solar system. Its size is similar to the Pluto's, but Eris is three times farther from the sun. It has a radius of about 722 miles. It is about one-fifth the radius of the Earth from an average distance about 6 billion to two. Uh, 289 uh, million miles. Eris is about 68 astronomical units away from the sun. One astronomical unit represents the distance from the sun to earth. From this distance, it can be estimated that sunlight takes 5 hours and 15 minutes to travel from the sun to Eris. Aries take 557 Earth years to make one complete trip around the sun. The plane of Aries orbit is way out of the plan plane of the solar system's planet and extends far beyond the Kuiper belt. As Aries orbit the sun, one rotation is completed every 25.9 hours making its day length similar to its day length. However, very little is known about its internal structure. Regarding the nature of Aries surface, it is projected that the rocky surface similar to the one present on Pluto is also present on Aries. The diameter of this drop planet away from the sun is so much that it its atmosphere collapses and freezes, falling to the surface as snow. However, as it gets closed, closest to the sun, while on its orbit, the atmosphere thaws. The surface of this drop planet is very cold. This greatly limits its ability to support life. Hamia. It is the sun far beyond Neptune and is about the same size as Pluto. It has two moons. One of its distinguished characteristics is how fast it spins on its axis. This drop planet spins fast on its axis once every four hours. The fastest spin of any known largest large object in the solar system. Hamia rapid spin eventually keeps it from attaining a spherical shape. Instead, it tends to look more like a slightly flattened football spinning end over end as though it had been kicked. Hamia is about 1430 miles across at at its longest axis, but less than the half as wide, 619 miles its density. Because different materials would stretch and out differently. As a result, scientists are of the opinion that Huamia is entirely made of rock. However, observation of Huamia revealed a brightly gleaming surface. Scientists have concluded that although most of Hamia's interior is rocky, it must be covered by a thin layer of icy cell.
Makke Makke. It is a dwarf planet in the solar system. It was the fourth body identified as a dwarf planet and was one of the bodies that altered scientists to reclassify Pluto. Makke Makke is the second brightest object known in the outer solar system, just slightly dimmer than Pluto. It is 870 miles wide. It orbits beyond the range of Pluto, but closer to the Sun than Aries, taking approximately 310 Earth years to complete its orbit around the Sun. This dwarf planet is reddish brown in color, making scientists conclude that it must contain a layer of methane at its surface, possibly in pellets one centimeter thick. Signs of frozen nitrogen and surprise given its similarities to Pluto, which at least has a thin one. The dwarf planet is brighter than Aries but dimmer than Pluto. It spins on its axis once every 22.5 hours with a day just a shorter than Earth. Any question or any doubt? Do you have any doubts? If anyone have any doubts, you can. Is the who is? <laughs> Okay, is there a quiz? Ah, yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, Mahalishmi has quiz. Nice. So, other, anyone else have any doubts? You can bring it down. Which Mahalakshmi the quiz is? I don't understand. Which website or which app will she ask you? Quiz conductor. In web, which app is the quiz conducted? She will post the link. She will post the link. I mean, I will post. It will be crazy. Yeah. Like, Arshad, you can leave that if it's uh, getting late for you. Next is said bye. Bye bye. Next is I will post. Idiot. Yeah. Mahalashmi, the presentation is very nice, very neat. Yeah, thank you, Jaggu. That's your so amazing presentation. That's the best presentation online. Thank you. You have a lot of companies waiting for you to take you in, or you can form a new company with uh, your own uh, teammates. Riya is there, Sadhana is there. Jagu, yeah. can you can you ask Mahalakshmi to join in our company? Not yeah, our company, yeah, sorry. Sorry, our department. Our department. They sorry, Harjit, it's a department. None other, it's not a company. Mahalakshmi, put the, I can see the link. I need to put the code. Yeah, okay. Okay, and my quiz, the code is there. Uh, Jagu. Yes, yes. Jagu, I have put all the details of our department and they can join. Yes. Oh, they want. Mahalashmi, you can share the screen. In a quiz. Uh, in a quiz. Yeah. 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 Okay. I get the code. I'm going to join with the code. code, out, code. Please do send a link. A click. Uh, Mahalashmi, share the other part. Share the link option. I'm going to join with the code. Uh, share a direct link. Just click the share the direct yeah, link. Share the direct link. Uh, yeah, click WhatsApp. WhatsApp, click WhatsApp. Uh, uh, you can see the uh, WhatsApp. So put it in our young researchers group. I can copy paste. Yeah. Hey, zoom on with our option. Yeah. Isha Vidya Lanpuranga. Isha Vidya Lanpuranga. Parala, it's okay. She is not in the group diet. She will paste it. Uh, Iria, can you post the link in the chat box now? She put it in uh, in the group. Yes, Jagu. Isha group. Isha group is not joining for one more. No, no. In the group, after the presentation, put www.joinmyquiz.com. Zero two three zero two three. According starting zero two three.
better jagu can hmm. can you ask her to click the or a share direct no 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 now it will be shared that way for the i'm not able to join i know one minute jagu i'm sending the link jagu my whatsapp is disconnected can you share it yeah yeah i have yeah i share it i share it research is cool like research is cool Yeah. Okay, not this link. From researchers crew, someone posted. Harjit, you are in researchers crew. You have just posted, no? Hello, Zoom. Lana, try try out coming. Only four members joined. I think they are struggling to. Uh, Find the link. Copy link. I am going to put it. Darun joined. Okay, just click on this thing now. It will take you to the link. I posted in chat box. Click that link. At the direct on the uh, link to that will uh, connect. Ah. पर जॉइन करने का अंगला हाँ लाइक नाउ लाइक टू पी स्टार्ट रिया आइसबिया दरुन कितना हज़ित रागमय सत्य की ऑल आर जॉइन Sir, can you resend what you send because I joined from another device. Okay. Used to join now because my laptop. Yeah, send, send. It's available in YouTube Live as well, so you need that. And it's also given in Android search as well. Adrit joined. Rana also is joining now. Hmm. I think you can start. Now oh, wait, wait. No, two more people are joining. Where's the link? I'm sure I'll be joining for one hour. Where are we going? I'm going to come. I'm going to come. I'll start from here. I think. Of... जगू Yes, I think you can start. Yeah, how many here to join? Is everyone joined? Ten members joined. Jabu. No, eleven. And then India under. Sir, I did not join because okay. I. Okay. So wait. Okay. So, I I think Nina posted. Rakhi, click that link. She posted in the chat box now. Use this link. This will work. Yeah, Naman joined. Naman joined. Ah, Rana also joined. I think just start now. Ah, okay, just. Well, it's time because. The Tom Dwarf Planet was coined by. Well, choose the correct answer, Lali. Ah. Ah, yes. Okay. So you need to type the answer. Okay. 
Shall I type the answer, Jaku? <laughs> yeah. The answer is Alan's thumb. Yes. Is your teacher a monster? Huh? How is my presentation? So I think this is the bonus question. Ah, yes, good. But you yourself answer to have to answer. It is nice only. What is the first object discovered in Cuba Belt? There is Pluto making. Which is which one of the following is dwarf planet? Mars, Charon, Homia, Sun. Power up. How oh, you get the, all these things? Homia is entirely made of fox eye lights. The answer is rock. Which? What, what is the color of mountain? Which color is mountain? White to sand to red is brown, red is sick color. Red is brown. Red. Hey, she's, she was being uh, put a uh, play with friends. I'm thinking Jaguar. So Thank that is showing like this. <laughs> she's yeah, yeah. What dark planet is largest to know in dark planet? I don't know. I see. Correct. Which dark planet is in the outer solar system? Dash is an object, spherical object. Pluto is Ceres Humia. Our planet is smaller than Earth, Saturn, Mercury. Mars. Mercury. Hey, why are you are telling answer now? Aday. This is quiz. Me mind wise and energy really has read. Sir, I was 
in the first place actually you are in the first place fourth place oh nice sir i am in second place sir nice so uh, i was actually in second place so dwarf planet we should not consider in the competition so the adrit is actually topping it adrit vignesh and pranav amrita and amrita is very close riya is also close well done adrit vignesh pranav amrita riya harjit so well done super actually she she used her phone to do the whole presentation see how like it looks very neat actually Yeah, she asked ask me jago i have only phone to do presentation i said that's fine it's very well done well done mahalakshmi thank you jago mahalakshmi you can end the quiz you can click the end yeah 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 end quiz that i am the into marco yes hey can you turn in when one two one Plan A. Hey, we can't do that. <laughs> nice. So that's Mahalakshmi's very first presentation. That's on live. And well done, Mahalakshmi. Really well done. So let's go on huge round of applause for Mahalakshmi again. All of you, you can go unmute. Well done. Well done. Well done. so this will be on uh, so this will be like a memory for you when you look back this is there always okay yes sir uh, wish all of you do more and more presentation try to form a team so that that will give you more experience yes uh, sir give you more broad minded uh, thing about team building and everything okay Thank you so much. See you all tomorrow with one uh, new set of audience. We have a new team presenting tomorrow. As well, we have three to four uh, solo presenters uh, presenting tomorrow. Thank you so much for such being such wonderful audience.